Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a book review video on seven books. And some of these books were okay, a couple were good. So I'm just going to get right into the two, well the three that I really didn't like. This one I didn't even finish because it was that bad. Now I like reading books a lot, if you guys couldn't tell. And... This book I didn't like just because it had a lot of passages where it was mostly just descriptive um, paragraphs and stuff. And I don't like books like that. I like books that have a lot of dialogue in it because it sets the story up instead of um, the setting. Like, I know, you know, like, you're in this boat because it's about a boat. Like, okay, you're in a boat. Like, you don't have to tell me every little detail about this boat. Or submarine or whatever it was. This is called The Mediterranean Caper. It's by Clive Cussler. I don't know how to spell. I don't know, spell. I don't know how to say his last name. This is what it looks like. It was basically about um, this World War I fighter plane attacks this submarine or boat or something. And... They... I don't really know what it was about. Like, the first couple chapters of it I thought they were looking for some kind of treasure or something I thought it was gonna be like a mystery book and I just couldn't get through it because of all the like the descriptions of things and stuff I just didn't like it I mean that's why I didn't obviously finish it and I just really didn't like it I did not like it one ounce of it I did not like it and I couldn't even like because sometimes you know how like it takes a while like to get into a book or something. Well, this book, I didn't really get into it at all. That's probably why I didn't like it. And this next one, now this next one was kind of okay. I kind of like, every once in a while, I kind of got into it and then I didn't. And this is called The Tomb of Hercules. It's by Andy Murdot. I don't know. I butcher people's last names. So if I say it wrong, I'm sorry, but... I just don't know how to pronounce people's last names. This is what it looks like. And what, obviously, this book was about was they had to find, they were they wanted to find um, the Tomb of Hercules. And people were like, there's no such thing because he was a dem dem uh, demigod. He didn't have a tomb or whatever. But apparently in this tomb, there were supposed to be all these treasures and stuff. And I think they found it in Ad Atlantis, you know, the lost city. And to get into the tomb, they had to perform um, some of the 12 labors that Hercules had to do um, in Greek mythology. And so it was kind of that, that part was kind of where I got into it a lot more. I did finish this book and I really did enjoy it. And it like, I mean, it was kind of like, it was sort of kind of like the Da Vinci Code kind of, if you ever read that book, like, or that series, it was kind of like that because they had to find clues and they had to do things that Hercules did in Greek mythology and stuff like that. But this is what it looks like, if I didn't already show you guys. So this book is kind of centers around the fall time. And it takes place in a pumpkin patch. And this is a Candy Holiday murder mystery. And the reason why she's called Candy is because she was born on Halloween. And her sister, his, her name is Holly, and she was born on Christmas. And this is um, the fourth book in the series because it has a number four on it. This is called A Town in Pump Wait, Town in a Pumpkin Bash. It's by B.B. Hayward. Hayward. It has um, recipes in it. This is what it looks like. And it takes place in a small town where Candy's from, where her and her one friend are doing this pumpkin patch tour, haunted house type of thing. And here. Um, somebody ends up being dead in this pumpkin patch, and it turns out it's all to do with this haunted house, and it's connected with another mystery that happened 20 years ago, and it was a really nice book. It, I always like little mystery books like this. It's one of, like, my favorite things, because sometimes you can find a good series of books, and sometimes you can't. It just depends on how it goes, and of course, like, with me, like, I'll buy, like, five or six in the series and then watch like that's when I don't like the whole series and I have six other ones to read but this one was good I don't know if I have any more of these but I just wanted to read it because 
it is the fall time, at least where I live, it's fall. And I just thought, you know, it's a cute little book. And it, it's pumpkin-y. I mean, I don't really like pumpkins, but it was in a pumpkin patch, so it was kind of cute. And it was really good, and it, it involves, like, the wealthy person in the town, too. So it was a really good book, and the person who did it in the book, who killed this person, had a shocking backstory as to why they did it. And I like that, because sometimes when I read some of these, like, little mystery books, I can always figure out who it is sometimes, based on, like, how they act with different characters. But yeah, it was a really good book. Like, I really liked it. So this one wasn't a good... This one really wasn't good. Um, this is sort of like, um, when I do, I think in my last book review video, I did the Cat Who books. This is sort of kind of like a different spin-off kind of of those books. The, they're by a different author. Um, it's by Rita Mae Brown and Sneaky Pie Brown, and Sneaky Pie Brown is her cat. And this is po Puss in Cahoots. It's a Miss, a Mrs. Murphy mystery. And this is what it looks like. And it's kind of a weird book because it's one of those books, again, where the cats and the dogs kind of run the show. Like, they're kind of, like, the ones figuring it out. Like, in my other books, like, the cat who books, the cats don't talk or anything. But in these books, the cats and the dogs talk. I don't know, well, it's not like a book where, like, the people can hear and speak to the people, to the cats and dogs and stuff like that, that makes any sense. It's about the, this, um, the, this couple who was going on their second honeymoon, they went to Kentucky, and things are just going so bad because the saddlebred horse went missing, and they don't know why, and they're trying to figure it out with the help of, well, the cats kind of figure it out. And I don't know, like, I don't like books like that, where, like, it goes back and forth between the people and the cats, and you have to make sure that you know um, who who's who in the book. So they do have, like, a glossary in the front of the book of the character list, so you kind of figure out who it is. And for some reason, there are, like, not in every chapter, but in some chapters, there's, like, pictures of, like, illustrations. I don't know why. It's one of these weird books, but, like, I mean, I got through and I liked it, kind of. But it was just one of those things where, like I said, like, if you don't remember the characters' names um, of the regular people and the cats, it's one of those things, too. So this book, I read a book, a book that was in this series, and it's a bibliophile mystery, um, series. It's called The Books Could Kill. It's by Kate Carlisle. I think that's how you say her last name. Again, I butcher people's last names. So this is what it looks like. Um, there is a cat on it, and usually in most of the books, when it's about, like, a library or a bookstore, there's always cats in it, and I don't know why. Um, I mean, I've never been to a library or a bookstore that had a cat in it anyway, and I read a book like this before where it was um, about um, this woman who she um, helps restore old books. And this one book she got was a cursed book that this guy had and he died and stuff. But this book is different. This one is about a woman named Brooklyn. And she's in Scotland where this guy gives her a book that, um, who, the guy who wrote it only wrote a certain number of these books, and it was supposed to be attached to, this author was supposed to have been, um, the lover to King George III's one daughter, and they were supposed to have an illegitimate, um, kid together, stuff like that, and they didn't really, um, find out any information to see if that was true, but of course somebody did take the book because of the fact that that's the rumor that was behind it, and it was a nice book, I really liked, I really liked it, and it was, it was a good book, and the person who gave her the book, um, something happens to him, but 
it was a good book, and I really liked it, but, um, I don't know if they just made up that rumor for the book, or if it was actually true, I don't know, but it was a good book, I liked it. There wasn't, I don't think there was even a cat in this book at all, so I don't know why there's a cat on the book. This was a good book, um, excuse me, this book is about, um, I think it's a series of books, because they did talk in this book about something that happened previously, and this is called The Amish Bishop Mysteries, and this is, the title is When the Bishop Needs an Alibi, it's by Vanetta Chap Chapman, this is what it looks like, and this book is all about um, this Amish man who, he's a widower, he's a widower, no, widower, I think, or he's just been single. I don't remember. And anyway, what happens is he always goes into this um, diner to get food because he's by himself. He doesn't have anybody to cook for him or anything. And he ends up um, getting involved with um, this woman. And this woman has this, um, and she's not Amish, but she has this secret she's keeping from um, these people because she doesn't want this guy to find her because this guy that's trying to find her killed her husband and stuff and what happens is is she ends up dying and he is the only um, person who she has been in contact with so the bishop has to clear his name out before he can figure out who killed her and why and he gets help from this woman's sister. And it was a good book. Like, it was really different because I do read some Amish books every once in a while. So it was kind of different to see it in, like, a mystery type of format. But it was really good. I really liked it. I mean, it, the chapters were short in it. And then some were long. But most of them were short. And I really liked it. There was a glossary in the back of it for if you... um. Like, didn't know some of what the Amish um, words meant and stuff. But other than that, it was a good book. I really enjoyed it. It was really different from what I'm used to reading in that genre. This book is the fourth book in a series called The Trials of Apollo. It's called The Tyrant's Tomb, and it's by Rick Ro Roydian. And this is all about um, Apollo, the Greek god, because Rick Rodian, he always writes about different types of gods, like the Greek gods, the Roman gods, the Egyptian gods, the Norse gods. And this is the fourth one in the series, and this book is all about Apollo and how his dad, Zeus, ends up um, making him mortal for something that he did. I forget what he did because it's been so long since I read um, any of these books because he always comes out with them like only for once a year. And this is what the book looks like. And basically in this book, it takes place where he has to find these oracles to um, help him figure out what he has to do in order to regain Zeus's trust so he can become a god again. And um, he has to find these emperors and kill them so that um, that's part of the prophecy. So this book was all about um, Caligula. Cal I can never say his name. Calig Calig and he's one of like the worst emperors that there ever was and he has to go on this quest to find him and he gets help from his friends and the next book is probably going to be the last one because usually he always ends his books um in fives and the last book is about Nero and Nero is probably the second worst Roman emperor there was but it was a really good book I mean I love his books his books are always good no matter which ones you read I mean my least favorite one was the one about the Norse the Norse gods but other than that I mean this is this is really good and there's like like and there's other from if you read any of his other books um some of the other characters are in those books too but all in all it wasn't that bad these books weren't really that bad except for those two books that i just showed you but i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i'll see you guys next time with another video